Hello, welcome to Show and Telling, the podcast. I'm Monty, editor Mel is here today. Hello. And um, we are joined once again by Shannon Kelly-White. Thank you for having me back. You are so very welcome. <laughs> Wearing the same dress as last time, I you know, should have changed. You know, it's just a trend now, you know. To... <laughs> um, no, we are filming two in a day, we're just spacing them out a little bit. You were um, with us last month um and it was stace yourself and i so shannon is the lady behind shannon's kitchen which if you were lady not, is a very inaccurate term it is the bush peak behind <laughs> shannon's kitchen um is shannon so you you are a best-selling author your cookbook is shannon's kitchen healthy food. healthy food you'll actually fucking eat love it and also you um have the book parenting for legends both of them are brilliant like you will not be able to read these books and not absolutely cack yourself the idea is to give people a little giggle yeah and it's so, so fun <laughs> you do definitely giggle also shannon has written many pieces for um our website as well show and tell online um so go and check those out and also shannon you have your own blog shannon's kitchen yeah yep yep shannon's kitchen.com is where i live com. great lots of recipes and stuff there as well yeah and just a bit of shit talking as well so Good. you were a nurse in a previous life yeah before i had my kids i was a nurse Yep, loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I'll go back to do it again when my youngest is at school. Wow. Totally gave up her career to have kids. I honestly... No, nah, I, I just hit pause and uh, nursing nursing is great because you can do shift work, but it just didn't... I just didn't want to go back to work. I wanted to spend yeah. time at home with my little man. So, And I, then I started writing and making a little bit of money from it and yeah. um, then I decided to do the cookbook and it worked out really well. So now I can kind of forward to just keep doing that and I'll write it out until it dies yeah then I'll totally. go back to nursing God. it is so because I honestly couldn't wait to get back to work after I had my kids I love having the writing going on like that's why I started the blog when my um oldest was one um because I pretty much just wanted something to do yeah that, that wasn't you know wiping little rings or um you know dangling rattles across a face yeah. so um yeah I started the blog just for a bit of fun Mm. And something outside of mum. Yeah. Well, that's what Show and Tell started from as well. Um, So can you tell us, because you would get this all the time, but tell us some of your fucking epic nurse stories. Oh, yeah. So the worst one um, would be I started my shift and I went in to see a patient who I'd been looking after for a couple of months. So he was my favourite. And I went in there and he said, oh, Shannon, um, my bag, I think my bags needs emptying. So he had like... A poo bag. Yeah, yeah. Um, Monty, you're looking at me. No, I'm already at, horrified. No, no, because in my head I'm picturing it. Does does the, the stuff that goes into is it coloss? Well, he had an ileostomy, so it depends mm. where in the bowel um, that yeah that the cut was made. So he his was in the ileum, so he had an ileostomy. So what comes out of it is quite liquid. Right. Yes. Uh, okay. Whereas if it's a colostomy, it's more formed. Oh. Yeah. This is a great conversation, isn't well, it's it? Interesting. Wow. Go it is on. interesting. No wonder you invited mm. me back. Um, so anyway, I went in and. Um, and he was right. It was at bursting point, this <gasps> bag. Like it was just full of like liquid Like a balloon shit. sort of? Yes, like a <gasps> like puffer fish. Um, oh, and I knew, I was like, this is a high pressure situation, Shannon. Like you gotta, mm. you got to take this easy. Um, and I got all the stuff ready. Um, and I was like, easy does it, easy does it, Shenzi. Oh I just God. slowly started peeling, peeling it back. But <gasps> it just went all over my face. Shut up. <laughs> You got such a fright. Did you see her? Oh, my God. It's like you got someone else's shit all over your face. Yeah, and no. I had my mouth open and everything. Shut up. Yeah. But, and he looked at me and I looked at him and our eyes were like wild animals. <laughs> and then I, could, I just I just cracked up because it was... What, did you spit? My compulsion, like my first instinct... Well, it wasn't like... A, it was like it a, a little cheeky little splatter went in there. It wasn't like oh, I had a cup full in there. A little oh. bit, yeah. So maybe Shit do happens. you think it would be good on toast? <laughs> um, I'd go with no. It's very spreadable, yes. yes. Um, but, <laughs> so that was me worst. And I was wow. like, I was pretty much alcohol swabbing my face for the next 47 days. <gasps> wow. Isn't that funny when stuff like that happens? Even if it's stuff that's really highly embarrassing or those sort of cringy stories, you always think after it's done, oh, my God, this is the best story. (laughs) I've got such a good story to tell everybody. (laughs) That is really fucking gross. It's pretty gross. Okay, what else? You had one about balls. Oh, yes. Um, So when I was working in um, the emergency room and a lovely old man came in and he's like, "Um, uh, I'm a bit, I'm a bit swollen. Mm. And I was like, oh "Oh, no, are you? And uh, he's like, and he's like gesturing down at his ding dong. 
area. Um, and he was really old and he couldn't even, you know, get his pants down himself. So um, I crouched down and helped him get his pants down. And as they dropped, I just said, holy shit, that's the <gasps> biggest set of balls I've ever seen. And he was like, I know. They were like... How big are we talking? Fruit. Bigger give, than give mangoes. Us. Each one no. was oh, bigger no. than a mango. And I'm talking Kensington Pride brand, or the big oh, fellas. Wow. They were juicy. They were so big. I couldn't even... And what was wrong with him? I, I don't know. He just They had like edema there. That I can't really remember What's what edema? the... Like, you know, just fluid where it shouldn't be. So his balls were just full of... Fluid. She hadn't had sex um, for 645 years. Oh, and I don't think he was going to have any that day either. It pretty much had <laughs> taken over the entire region. So what happens in that cave? They have I to be remember. drained? I don't think oh. so. He was like a poor old fella. It was in his 80s. I can't remember how, how it was resolved or even – they probably wasn't even resolved. He probably just limped on out of there Holy moly. with painkillers. So you That's used to one. work in the emergency department. Yeah. But then you also worked with breast cancer and – Bowel cancer. Bowel cancer patients. Yep. Um, and you prefer the longer term, like you prefer looking at in, in yeah, the longer term. Yeah, the emergency right? work is really exciting because it's go, go, go. Mm. And um, as a nurse, it's great because you have a lot more autonomy. You get to make a lot more decisions because um, mm. everything's on the fly. Mm. But the downside is everyone moves through really quickly and yeah. you don't get to know yeah. them. Whereas on the ward, um, especially where I was, it, you would often have a patient for a week. And so, you know, they'd be bringing you in their special little treats that they bake from home, you know, their partner oh. bake from home. And you'd get to know them so well and... Um, that was my favourite part. And their families um, too. Yeah, they're oh. beautiful. I mean, it was hard because sometimes obviously it doesn't always go well yes. with yeah. cancer. Um, but I'm, I've met some beautiful people. The poor fellow who um, whose bag bursted on my face, he was with us for five, five months, I think. Oh, wow. Um, unfortunately, he passed away. But um, I went to his funeral and it was oh, like, you know, it's like you, you, you do kind of become... Like a family, a temporary yes. family member because, you know, it's so intimate caring for people like oh, that. God, yeah. yeah. But it's such a special job. I know it's to you it was probably second nature, but it's really not. It's, it's And I always say this about midwives too and nurses, it's, you're actually like angels. And yeah, I know that's... I agree. We are heaven sent. <laughs> yes, we are. We know it. It is because it's an extremely underpaid job. The mm. pressure situations, the disgusting stuff you also have to do is... It is really... It's definitely underpaid because, oh, like, yeah. you, if you make a mistake, um, yeah. that's... Whoa, that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure on nurses. Um, a bad day for you is extremely different than a bad day for most other people. Oh, know? absolutely. absolutely. Like, and I think it's over, it's made me a much better person, nursing, having nursing experience, and it's made yeah. me a lot more, like... Is anyone going to die? No. Nah. Oh, well, she'll be fucking right. Just, Do you yeah. reckon it has done that? Do you reckon yeah. it it's, you more In some way, it's, it's made me more scared because I've seen... What can happen. Yeah, you've seen the horrible things that go wrong. Um, but then again, I don't know, it just gives me so much appreciation and my, my threshold for, for shitness mm. is, you know, things have got to be really bad before, you know, I care mm. that much. Yeah. Um, so, you know, good and bad po- sides of... Do you reckon it makes it. you, like, things like, are you more relaxed with your house and, and things? Oh, I'm vile, yeah, totally. That's so good. <laughs> I know. It'd be nice to mm. let go of that stuff. But as you said, because you're seeing life and death every day... I don't care about a tumbleweed you know. of hair blowing down my hallway. No way. I know. It's so great, though. Hey, speaking of hair, I've got a really random pubic hair fact for you, which yeah. I know is Bring very... Bring it on. Um, I'm just going to – sorry, Mo, you're going to have to play with this a bit because I'm yeah, just right. – one can tell from my headphones that my level's really bad. Um, yeah, okay, so here's a ra- – this random pubic hair fact, right, is that the average life cycle of a pube is three weeks. Three weeks. Mm-hmm. That's all i got for you. Wow. <laughs> I feel like they've lived on my bathroom floor for longer than three weeks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You've got to be, because there's so um, many hairs down there. And yeah, every three weeks they just fall out. Yeah, but can I tell you something? Mm. I feel like the rate with which they grow back, for me, is really slowing down. Oh, which really? makes me terrified. Well, you definitely don't have pubes aging. when you're older. No, you would have seen old. old there's a there's a lack of there's a lack of 
you know, it's a big volume. Yeah. Full, for it's sure. a full circle of life. Like you think of when you're a kid, you've got nothing there, you've got no teeth, all that stuff. Then when you get old, it all you lose again. your pubes, yes. you lose all your hair, you yeah. know. I'm not too upset about losing my pubes. I don't, they don't really do much for me. No, no, me either. But I just think it's representative. Like I'm super hairy and now they're not growing back the way they once were and I'm like, <laughs> oh, Oh my god, is this the end? Maybe you could get extensions. Oh no. (laughs) Oh my god. A merc. No. (laughs) A merc. Um, Yeah, I was fascinated by that. That was like, wow, it's surprising you don't see more. Is there anything more messed up than when you go to a public toilet and you've oh. got to shuffle a pube off the no. seat? Rogue pubes are oh, the just worst in the disgusting. world. <laughs> I get so when you horrified find them by that somewhere stuff. That's not a bathroom or a toilet, though. Oh. If you were to say outlive in your life, where have you found a pube? I have seen a pube on my kitchen bench, and I said, "What have you been doing in here, <laughs> Sunny Jim?" No, but it could be from a chest hair, a chest hair, and, and also leg, leg hair. On guys. Mm. I know a pube when I see it, girls. Oh, you could have... Really? Yeah. <laughs> I quizzed him about it. Don't worry about it. Do you reckon <gasps> he did do something out there? Like, how would a pube get there? Could have been stuck in, like, his watch and then fall Doesn't out. wear a watch. Could have been your pube. How do you oh, know I know my yours? brand. I know my brand. <laughs> <laughs> it was not me. How funny. <laughs> well, do you know what? Speaking of um, vaginal facts, mm. do you know the uh, heaviest weight... That a woman has lifted with her vagina. Mm. Oh, what, what, what part you, of her what vagina? Yeah. Okay, so what they do is they make like a wooden egg thing that she inserts inside herself, oh. and the egg is attached to weights, and she wow. just sort of clenches oh. and pulls it up. Wow, thirteen point six kilos. What? Whoa. What a beast! That's great. With her badge. That is wow. an epic pelvic floor action there. I'm really glad that you explained the method of how they did that because I was picturing like little flaps doing bicep curls. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, the egg thing makes a lot more sense. Yes. I kind of wow. want to give it a go. I know. Imagine I would I would drop that thing at like half a kilo. I'd be like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 you're just going... <laughs> Shannon, you wrote on your Instagram about um, post kid sex. Yeah. What did you write on it? Mel said that you wrote about it. it. Was so I didn't, good. I didn't see that one. What did you write? It was so good. Read it out. Have you got it here? I'll read it out. I'll get it on my. It was your last post, I reckon. It was a picture yeah. of you holding Parenting for yeah. Legends. Yeah. yeah. And you were talking about sort of the importance of. Well, we yeah, the, the, but the, a lot of parents are having less, you know, after you have children, you have less sex than you did before kids. And I yeah. asked a lot of people, like, what, like why? Like I know why, our reasons, but like yeah. why are people not doing it anymore? Um, and what's the main thing, just fatigue? A lot of people, a lot of people it's time and energy. Yeah. Like, mm. you know, at the end of the day, I'd rather stuff my face with a half a pack of Tim Tams than friggin' old mate's dick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for a lot of women too, it was the, how they felt about their body afterwards. Yeah. And so they didn't want to get naked. They didn't want to get naked. And totally. That, I don't know. I think that really, that's really sad. That sucks. It is really sad. Shouldn't have to feel that way with your um, partner. It is no. though when you don't feel good in yourself when to be touched like sometimes even after I've eaten too much I'm like oh don't touch me don't touch me and when I'm I an animal to, yeah yeah <laughs> but when I used to have eating problems I couldn't handle anyone touching me if I felt too too full yeah. or big I'd be like get your hands off you can't touch my tummy I always remember telling my ex-boyfriend and Sam in our early days going don't touch my tummy I just felt so repulsive I guess Aww. and so I think that I understand going if you're not feeling good about yourself you're not wanting to, to oh, I, feel I totally understand it because I think like I, me and a lot of girlfriends I've spoken to is mm. if you don't feel desirable you kind of don't feel desire definitely um, yeah. so if I you're agree. walking around with your tits that are now long and yes, you're they're long dangling around oh, man it's so sad <laughs> do you know um, what when you get the opportunity like say for example I don't know, you go and stay at a hotel or whatever. I've always got that mentality, fuck first. Oh, that's a good idea. Get it over the first. And then then we can get to the fun stuff. And then then you go and enjoy your meal and eat as much as you want and not have to worry about it. Yeah, we have the same policy, actually. And also, too, because we tend to drink too much. Like when we go out, we're like parents Um, gone wild. And so if we both get drunk, we won't be boning. No, and they go forever. When they've had too much to drink, you're just like, mate, I'm starting to chafe. Let's (laughs) finish this off. It, and also the worst thing you can do is compare the amount of sex you're having to other people. And people probably lie as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, I agree. I agree. Say they're having it more or less. I reckon Mel says she's having it less than she's having. No. Bit Mel's of a secret horn dog, is she? Bit of a secret yeah, horn dog. Yeah, Mel's one of the people that you don't compare yourself with because you'll be like, oh, no. my God. But we do do it 
quite often. But that's the spirit. Good on you. No, but you know why? We I can't even say it's just him. We can feel it when we're not. We're nitpicky with each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's almost like I don't know, like it's medicinal, a, it, medicinal you know relations. What? And I read something once, and it was so true. It was something like, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stuff it up, but something like, women need intimacy to um, be sexual, and men, which not always, but and men need sex to jam it into. <laughs> men yeah, need sex whole. to feel intimacy. Right, right. And yeah, sometimes I think, oh, they just want to, you know, screw or whatever. But then I think. Well, especially like my husband isn't a big talker and all that. That's his way of feeling connected mm. to me, you know, and it's good. Yeah. It's Sometimes good. you can't be bothered, but once, once you start, you're like, once you start, oh, hello. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. Just throwing that first leg over. I know. Just, yep. <laughs> I know. So to speak. Yeah. But that's, it is interesting, isn't it? Because you always, you definitely feel more connected after you have done it, but it is after you're tired, the kids are there. It is hands down the first thing that, drips away but at yeah. the same time it is also one of the main things that separates you from being just best friends yeah exactly it's, yeah, yeah. it's the thing that makes your relationship unique hopefully yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> or not agree. um oh have you got the list of revolting everyday things mel i really hate washing up gloves let me find it oh like i did just i just don't like them who you, they're very, do you ever use washing up gloves i've got washing up gloves because i had a cat that was a cereal spewer so oh, disgusting Oh. That's not her fault. She had thyroid issues. Thank you very much. <laughs> Judge my old lady. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. So would she just puke all the time? Yeah. She, so she, we didn't, she wasn't, we were trying to get a diagnosed, but yeah, she had um, like a, a tumor on her thyroid. Oh. Um, and so and she'd just puke. She, yeah. She'd spew like at least once a week. And so you would have thing. to go and get the gloves to clean up. My mum always used to wash the dishes with those. Remember, because we didn't used to have to. Di- I didn't have a dishwasher when I was younger, so the really hot water. Yeah, and super they'd hot. Use that. Did yep. she have nice nails, your mum? Yes, she or had nice she nails nice too. Nails? So to protect her nails, I can't handle sponges. Oh, sponges! And no, no, I hate sponges as well. Sponges are Chucks, not good. anything that's sitting. I can only have like the scrubbing brush to wash dishes with. I yeah, can't same. have um, cloths. So um, I was looking through, um, there was this Reddit thread that is called 22 Everyday Objects That Are Actually Really Nasty When You Think About It. Mm. And it's revolting. Okay, so what okay, do you think? So, for them? example, bowling balls. I don't go bowling very often, but think <laughs> oh. of all the people whose manky fingers <laughs> those go inside. Those would be having Inside yes. those bowling balls, the shit and oh. piss and wank and everything in those balls. Good Yuck. heavens. Right? Okay. Um... TV remote controls in hotel rooms. We recently just stayed out a couple nights in the city and I was like, go and wash your hands to like my kids and my husband, go and wash your hands after they touch the remote. Makes me sick even looking through the, you know, when there's the, what's it called? Like the the binder there. It's got, oh, I'm for room service and whatever. And I'm thinking all the people that have touched this. All these gross people. Yeah, yes, yeah. I never have thought about that. Dumbbells and barbells at the gym. Yeah, that would be gross. This guy wrote, I clean those at the gym where I work and you would gag at the amount of nastiness that comes off the rags. Um, Someone wrote, we never wash belts, but they are the first thing we touch after we (gasps) wipe our bums. Good heavens. Do you know what? Not even, you know what else is like that? The soap dispenser. Like when you, yeah, when you put go to the on toilet, you it. put your hands on top of the soap to wash yeah. your hands. Imagine that. How yeah. much And turning food. the tap on first before oh. you've washed your hands and then you've got to turn, t- touch it again to turn it off. Yep. There's um, some uh, kitchen sponges. Yeah. Although a little yeah. hack there, put them in the microwave for yes. two minutes. Yeah, I've heard about that I heard hack. they do that in hospitals. Put them in a fire and burn them. Yeah. No, no, I hate them. Do you know what I do though? I put mine um, in Pino Clean and water overnight. Why don't you just get in my new kitchen ones? sink? Well, I do, but how often? You can't change them every day. Oh, I That's not. I, I do. I, I reckon two, I go through two sponges a week. Oh, all right, a week. Two sponges a week. I have tried. That. Oh no, no, maybe one a week. Yeah, I maybe go through two. I am at a zero sponge Hang level. On, so what are you using? What, what, yeah, what do you mean a zero sponge level? I don't have a sponge. I what will not mean? sponge. So I just use like face washes. I have a drawer full of face washes, and I'll just get a fresh one out each time to wipe the bench. How often do you wipe <gasps> the bench though? A few times a day. I reckon sometimes I wipe my bench a few times an hour. Yeah, well, I'm gross. But <laughs> oh, I, no, but not I will a few not, times an I hour. I will not debase myself with a sponge. <laughs> so you, how many face washes have you got? Oh, shitloads. A whole drawerful. A whole drawerful of face washes. And so why 
will you not use a sponge but you like because the face washer will get used the once and then it goes in the wash and yeah. then it comes back into my life whereas a sponge will just sit there being gross and festery all over everything <sighs> That's I haven't I actually haven't heard that. But is there anything worse than just <gasps> I know a wet say. dish? A, a, a and wet the smell, the smell of what? A, See of a, now, a dish mine rag. don't because I do the pino clean trick. But oh, the smell's nasty. The, it's so nasty. A, a wet sponge that's been sitting there, and you Horrifying. know, and then it's on your hands, and then you're like, I just find a really wet face washer grosso like you know when the kids get out of the shower and then maybe the next day you'll go and wring it out for some oh, reason no. it makes me feel no nah, it's I don't disgusting. Like that either. you know what is the worst smell in the world talk to me is flower water that's been like flowers that have been oh, like, oh yes 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 i've been sitting on the bench for a week it is like the most revolting bad breath you've ever smelled that's what bothers me about getting flowers because i can never be bothered changing the water why not? Because I just can't be bothered, especially if I've sort of arranged them and then I've got to pull them pull out, out, take the water out, clean the vase, put it. You can't oh, just God. refill the water because then you've got all the manky bits along the I side. I just refill. I feel so in control when I've got flowers, fresh flowers. It only happens to me about two or three times a year. Do, oh. It does it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a fresh flower. I'm not person. really. I'm not really a fresh flower person. What, what, so what, what's your thing? What do you like spending your money on? Are you, do you get facials? Sneakers. Sneakers? Oh. What's I your like flavour? Golden Goose. Oh, yeah. You have to save up for a long time to get those. They're pretty special. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> You've got them. And Stace has got them too. Stace yeah. loves them too. All I wear is sneakers though, so I can justify. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so it's like part of the mum uniform. The oh, sneakers. they're just the best. And I kid you not, every time I wear them, I get a compliment because they've got like Yeah, a bit of razzle dazzle. Yeah. And you will not, never not get a compliment. And that's always going to be right. and it doesn't matter how what else is happening with your body or whatever the shoes they your always shoes look fit good. and yeah. they always look banging i am in dog shit in my golden goose today oh. it's heartbreaking that is heartbreaking you Thank step you. in dog shit a lot i don't think i've stepped in dog shit for a long time really because i remember you saying that you did it at a friend's place not long ago and you'd stepped in dog shit and you walked into the house Oh, yeah, no, that was, oh, that was about two years ago. Oh, so Maybe God, a year time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, when you're having fun. But I um, literally, I was really cross. I was like, fuck you for not picking up your dog shit. I've oh, stepped yeah. in. These are expensive shoes. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're pretty trash now. But, and I just had, and so then I was out the front of the person's house and I just put, kept scraping my foot on, on their the, fence. <laughs> <laughs> but on the edge of their curb. And I thought, this is such an arsehole thing to do. It probably wasn't even their dog. So oh. then there's just scrapes of dog shit along the curb. <laughs> oh. You showed them who's boss. Seriously. <laughs> um, all right. So we will get out of here. Um, Shannon, thank you so much for Thank you for having me. Hosting. So fun. Shannon socials um, are Shannon's Kitchen on Instagram Australia as yeah, well. Yeah, Shannon's Kitchen Australia is the handle. But yeah, both. Shannon's Kitchen, you'll find me. Yeah, and so, so funny. Go and get Shannon's books and um, get amongst her because you will thoroughly enjoy it. Also, I made those those peanut butter bars that you make oh, with the yeah, rice crispies. Oh, yeah, they are not they? They're so tasty. <gasps> they're so easy and so <sighs> good. They're smashable. Yeah, they're really great. That's in your cookbook. It's yep. on your website as well. Yeah, it's too. on my website as well. That so one. go and check that out. Um, Honey also, and nut bars. Oh, is that what it is? Mm. Yeah, right. Yum. Um, also follow us on showandtellonline.com.au is our website. Also our social show and tell online. Would love you to leave an iTunes message. Helps bump us up and we read them all. We do. We do. So um, thank you. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye.